We have two scriptures this morning, but our main scripture will be in Deuteronomy. But come with me to Matthew chapter 4, beginning with verse number 1. Matthew chapter number 4, beginning with the first verse from the Amplified Version of the Bible. Mm -hmm. Then Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After he had gone without food for 40 days and 40 nights, he became hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones become bread. But Jesus replied, and I want you to pay close attention to Jesus' reply. He said, It is written, and forever remains written. That man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Now come with me to our main scripture for today. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 1. And I'll be reading from the message. When you have it, please say Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 1 reads as follows. Keep and live out the entire commandment that I'm commanding you today so that you'll live and prosper and enter and own the land that God promised your ancestors. Remember, Every road that God led you on for those 40 years in the wilderness. Pushing you to your limits. Testing you so that he would know what you were made of. Whether you would keep his commandments or not. He put you through hard times. He made you hungry. Then he fed you with manna, something neither you nor your parents knew anything about. He did this so you would learn that men and women do not live by bread alone. We live by every word that comes from the mouth of God. The word of the Lord is blessed. For a few moments, or today, I want to talk to you from the subject, don't take the easy way out. Don't take the easy way out. My brothers and my sisters, I truly believe that we can all agree that after God called us out of darkness and transitioned us into his marvelous light, he has placed upon all our lives a divine calling. This divine calling leads us individually and collectively to a divine purpose. With this divine calling and divine purpose, beloved, there are many ups. And it probably feels like there are twice as many downs. As we persevere with great expectations 
And we leave no stone unturned as we pursue the righteousness of God. Even though we have a divine calling and a divine purpose, we still have moments of turbulence. Even though we have a divine calling and divine purpose, we sometimes find ourselves in conflict. And sometimes we experience instability. I want you to understand that the call to serve is not easy. No, it's not. As we are doing our best to be better servants, hard times have a way of showing up when we least expect it. As bond servants of peace, we find agitators along the way seeking to disrupt and destroy our momentum. Disguising themselves as helpful comrades or concerned individuals. As ambassadors for Christ, misfortune and many setbacks have become a common companion for our daily lives. Even though we love God and we are striving to love one another, there have been moments of testing and tribulation that make us feel like we're losing our minds. When we do our best to walk in the holiness of God, we have all experienced letdowns and unforeseen disconnection from our family our friends, and our acquaintances. As loyal seekers of the kingdom, we regularly have found out that betrayal had a common stopping point in our front doors. We found weariness and woundedness on a repeating cycle day in and day out. However, we know that struggles and the difficulties that we endure aid in our growing process. And we know that all things work together for good to those that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Tell your neighbor that God has made me better. Through complexities, we become better. Through stress and sickness, we become better. Through agitation from other agitators, we become better. Through disillusionment and loneliness, we become better. Through bad vibes and heartache, my brothers and my sisters, we have become better. The songwriter says, Jesus is my everlasting portion, more than friend or life to me. Along my pilgrim journey, Savior, let me, me walk with thee. Isn't it good to know that God's close on today? No matter what we endure, God is right here with us. You see, I've grown to understand that life is hard. Do I got some folks that can agree with me on today? Life gets hard. And unfortunately, my brothers and my sisters, this ain't gonna change. There's no getting around it. There are gonna be complications. There are gonna be frustrations. No matter how righteous we are, or how righteous we try to be. And sometimes, thinking Woods, when you go through, even as a believer, you feel like all hope is gone. Come on, hallelujah. My brothers and my sisters, we've all been mentally drained. We all get physically, physically weary. 
even when we're trying to be spiritually right. But I'm going to challenge you on today. Don't take shortcuts on your walk with God. Amen. Don't look for detours that bypass points of maturity and growth. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Don't look for the exit door. When your way gets complex and when life gets difficult, don't run away when you need to run on. Yeah. Just a little while longer. Yeah. Simply follow God's directions, even when they're challenges struggles and disappointment and my brothers and my sisters don't take the easy way out our main scripture for today comes from the book of Deuteronomy Deuteronomy in the Greek means second law Deuteronomy for our understanding emphasizes that its laws are not new laws but rather a preaching of the original law to Israel and Sinai. Amen. Are y'all with me? Yes. It has been authenticated that Moses wrote this book and the majority of Deuteronomy as we know are his sermons addressing Israel who are the people of God. He's addressing them on the plains of Moab at the end of the 40 year wilderness period. All right. And this immediately precedes the conquest of Joshua. Amen. We understand in the book of Matthew that after Jesus' baptism, he was led by the Holy Spirit into the wild or the wilderness to be tempted by Satan. Yeah. My brothers and my sisters, Jesus, our Lord, had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. And you know when you're fasting, you're depriving yourself of sustenance. Because Jesus was depriving himself of sustenance, he was hungry. Are y'all with me? Yeah. All right. He was hungry, and in the midst of his hunger, Jesus is still being our example yeah. yes, and teaching us how to endure at the same time. Amen. 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 Jesus, I want y'all to walk with me now. Walk close with me. Jesus is weary. And the devil wants to take advantage of this opportunity. Have you ever been weary? Oh, yeah. And that's when the devil sneaks up on you and taps you on your shoulder. But he, he wanted to seize this opportunity. So he comes to Jesus, Reverend Slater, and he says, if you are God, you really don't have to endure the struggle yeah. of the process. All right. You can take the easy way out. Yeah, come on. Y'all oh. with me? Oh, yes. All you have to do is simply tell these stones to become loaves of bread and run me over y'all. Come on. See, he was telling Jesus. Why should you starve in the wilderness if you are really God? Amen. Let me break it down a little bit more. He said, how in the world could the father allow his son to go hungry in the wilderness when he provided manna for the rebellious children of Israel in the wilderness at Sinai. Yeah. All right. All right. So he provided for them so he should 
provide for you. Amen. In the beginning of verse number four, when I'm intrigued by what Jesus says. What does he say? He says, it is written and remains written. Jesus basically said, since I'm God, Satan, you know, and I know, I've seen this before. Amen. All right. Amen. All right. Amen. Amen. It's a rematch. It's a rematch. <laughs> See, I've seen this before. And my response is the same today. As it was back then. Yeah, y'all with me? He quotes his inspired, inerrant, and infallible word to the devil. When he says, man should not live by bread alone, but on every word proceeding out through the mouth of God. See, I found this intriguing that Jesus would quote Deuteronomy. Why? In his reply, Jesus quotes Moses. And when he quotes Moses, he validates the Holy Spirit's revelation to Moses. Y'all with me? He also validates the Edenic, Mosaic, and Abrahamic covenants. And he gives authority to all the books of Moses. Furthermore, the G Jesus reminds the devil through scripture who he is. And he rebukes the devil with that same scripture. Therefore, through this narrative to his disciples, Jesus instructs them and us at the same time. Yes, yes. See in the text. Moses tells God's people to keep the commands. Yes. I am giving you and do your best to live these commands. So we have to keep the commands, church. All right. Amen. And we have to live the commands. But he said if you keep these commands and live out these commands, you will enter and possess the land that God has given you. Amen. <laughs> Hope. If we keep the commands and live out the commands. Mm -hmm. HMBC is going to enter in to all that God has promised. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Understand, our obedience to God leads to success. See, he wants Israel to understand the role that God had led them on for 40 years in the wilderness was intentionally not easy. That's right. All right. And God knew that the, these uneasy experiences would push them to the limits. Yeah. Not only did he push them to the limits, he tested them so that he knew what they were made of All right. to see if they were ready for what was coming next. Are you ready for what's coming next? Amen. Understand, the testing showed God if they would obey him or not. So God put them through some challenging circumstances which included them, included them having to endure hard times and even going hungry. Amen. However, God 
then leave them hungry. Amen. My Lord, my Lord. He provided manna for them. My Lord. That they knew nothing about and their predecessors knew nothing about. God is going to supply each and receive something that we don't know about and the folks that came before us didn't know about. Amen. God is not going to leave ancient BC hungry on today. Because man does not live by bread alone. But we live on every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. His declaration by Moses and later quoted by Jesus lets us know emphatically that we are not to go after self-satisfaction in our own knowledge and strength when we struggle. Come on, Doc. Say it, say it now. Y'all got that? Say it now. That's right. We are not to go after self-satisfaction in our own knowledge and strength when we struggle. But we are better off remembering who God is. Amen. What God has done and what God can do while obeying and depending on him as we wait for him to move Amen. on our behalf. So with all that said, what should we do when we are tempted to take the easy way out in moments of weariness? Number one, remember who we are. Who called us? What we are commanded to be doing and where we're supposed to be going even in the midst of hard times. Number two, remember, in this process, God is going to take us through some challenging circumstances that push us to the very limits so we can grow so we can see what we are made of as we press forward towards the righteousness of God. And last but not least, remember, and I want you to remember that no matter how life treats you, God can and God will take care of you. My brothers and my sisters, the road it's going to get tough. But God can. And God will take care of you. There will be moments of lack and moments of drought. But God can. And God will take care of you. There will be times when we are unsure. But God can. And God will take care of us. Nobody said that the road was going to be easy, but we know that God can and God will take care of us. In life, there will be tests and there will be trials. There will be times that we feel crushed. There will be times when we feel disconnected. There will be moments of discomfort. There will be confusion. There will be disappointment. Unfortunately, my brothers and my sisters, dark days are ahead. Being rejected is in our future. Being misrepresented will show up soon. Everyone will be happy that God chose you. Storms will come. But I want you to remember, God can and God will take care of you. The songwriter said, let me act a throne of mercy. I find a sweet relief. Kneeling there in deep contrition. Lord, help my unbelief. I'm crying, Savior, Savior. Hear my humble cry. While of others, thou art crawling. Do not pass me by. In bondage, I'm crying, Savior. Stop by here. In the midst of pain, in the midst of sorrow. 
And also remember where we're supposed to be going. Yeah. Yeah. Even in the midst of hard times. Number two. Remember in this process, God is going to take us through challenging circumstances. That's right. my Lord, my Lord. And these challenging circumstances are strategically designed to push us to the limits. So if you are being pushed to the limit, say thank you, Lord. Thank you. But these challenges are for our good. Yeah, yeah. These challenges push us to grow. Yeah. So that God knows that we will walk in obedience. Come on, son. My Lord, my Lord. But last but not least, I guarantee you. Life's going to be tough. There's some agitators waiting for you. They may be right in this building. But don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. And tell yourself, God can. And God will. Take care of us. So I encourage you on today to simply remember God and stay obedient. Because man shall not live by bread alone, but on every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, don't take the easy way out. Tell your other neighbors, say, don't take the easy way out. Tell yourself, self, don't take the easy way out. The doors of the church are open. Let me say something about that passage. In Bible class, we're learning how to observe, and now we're focusing on interpretation. But see, in chapter number four, there are no disciples yet. Amen. All right. Amen. All right. Matthew doesn't show up till later. Yeah. And so if you listen to the sermon, <laughs> this was something that he had to articulate to his disciples. Amen. Are you with me to get the steps in? And he articulated it for a purpose. He meant to teach them something. When in struggle, remember God and be obedient. Amen. So pay attention to what the Bible gives us. Because when Jesus was tempted, he was alone. He was alone. All right. So he had to articulate this later for a purpose. Amen. 